Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very tense situation going on in Israel right now. Our good friend Lorenzo with arty-happen.com uh, sent us these images on Twitter. Uh, the Israeli forces around the border of Quenetra in the Golan have beefed up their security there. And, of course, the first thing I wanted to do is to find out why. Why is this actually happening? What's going on in the Golan that would cause Israeli forces to beef up uh, the security? And as I did, I first thing I noticed was on Haaretz, the Druze in the Golan Heights protest Trump's call for the recognition of Israeli sovereignty over the Golan. Uh, that is, and the 300, 300 demonstrators waved Syrian and Druze flags and carried images of the Syrian president Bashar uh, Assad or Bashar al-Assad uh, there at their protest. And this is something that I feel like that Prime Minister Netanyahu has kind of brought upon himself uh, by pushing the Jewish national state law through the uh, Knesset a law that uh, became effective last year in 2018 that officially recognizes Israel, Israel as a Jewish-only state. Now, I will say that the Prime Minister goes on to say that there is equality within the state for its Druze citizens and others in, uh, in the uh, community there, but the mere fact that it has become a national law has alienated certain groups and they feel alienated as a result. And I know that many of the believers in Yeshua that live in Israel have told us that they're very concerned about what's going to happen in the future. They're concerned about the Prime Minister leading us into a war uh, that will also bring about, as many will be killed, will also bring about a major persecution against the Christian community living in Israel. And no, it's not peaches and cream for the, uh, for the believers of Yeshua, especially if they're Israeli born and have converted to Christianity. They very much are an outcast and are persecuted. All you have to do is check out Zev Parat to learn a little bit more about that. But we've also had uh, Israeli believers here on Israeli News Live that have shared their testimony uh, with us. The Hyde family, in fact, being one of those families that have gone through the judicial process in Israel and they have tried to revoke their citizenship because of their conversion to Christianity. Uh, you know, there are some mainstream religions there that can actively be there without any problem, like uh, John Hagee's group, uh, Va uh, Catholic Vatican type groups there that can go pretty much without impunity by the government. But when it comes to their own citizens and converting, that becomes a taboo subject in the state of Israel. Now, Going into this, though, there was uh, when uh, the prime minister really uh, sparked another debate with one of the uh, Salim, one of the actresses there in Israel, uh, had came to the defense of uh, Palestinians. And, of course, Netanyahu uh, reiterated back in the Instagram message stating that or writing in there that this was a Jewish national law. It was a Jewish only state and also saying that there were, it was equality for other races in the in the country. Uh, and then uh, Miss uh, Galo, Galo, anyway, the superwoman lady that plays in the movie there, I forget her name, Gadot Galon, I think is her name. Uh, she came to her defense and actually quotes biblical passage by Moses, love your neighbor as yourself. Boy, I tell you what, she'll probably catch a lot of flack for that, but this is the way it should be. And, uh, and of course, there's a lot of tension over the goal line to begin with. And I'm going to kind of go back and address that. We had a lot of echo from yesterday, and I'm going to address that once again, also with uh, looking at Deuteronomy 4, uh, where uh, the city of Golan itself in Bashan was a refugee si uh, city. That was something a good friend of Brother Gary sent that to me to take into consideration as well. So we want to look at both sides of that. But let me continue on to some different news that's going on here. Uh, residents of the occupied Syrian Golan are gathering in a rally of uh, Mayadal Shams condemning the animal statements and asserting their allegiance to their motherland, Syria. So there, it's like they're calling on President Bashar al-Assad to take back the Golan. And I don't see that happening personally. But also in my own view, this is just something we don't need. We don't need another war. Uh, and therefore, although 
I believe the biblical narrative does not put the goal on, not all of it anyway, uh, maybe parts of it that we are in already are not part of Syria, but there are parts that probably still do belong to Syria. But to change that at this point now could only invoke another war. Well, maybe this is what they want in the first place, the elitists. They're wanting a war because they want to have an excuse to take out Damascus and they want to have an excuse to take out Iran. And of course, don't forget when they take out Damascus, what are they going to do? Fulfill biblical prophecy of Isaiah 17, where the prophet Isaiah clearly says that it is because you have forgotten the God of your salvation. And for the Christians, he says, you're not mindful of the rock. I mean, you guys got to think about this. I mean, stop. You got to stop for a moment. Please, my people need a light. A light. We're supposed to, Yeshua said to his apostles, you are a, a, a light that is set on a hill. You're not to be sitting there covering your head and going back under Judaism. I mean, listen, I love my people. I love them deeply and passionately. And my desire is for them to recognize that Yeshua is the Messiah because that's what the truth is. But instead, we have blindedly, and I was guilty as well myself one time because of my love to see my people back in their homeland supporting the national bride of Israel, and then one day it began to dawn on me, something is wrong here. The government is promoting the gay parades right there in Jerusalem openly for how many years now? The Bible says you willingly and openly have made it a city of Sodom. That's what the prophet said. And there's no shame in you for what you've done. And Christians, you forget that when the Messiah Yeshua was here, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, mainly the Pharisees, who, if you want to talk about anti-Semitic, look to your own Savior that you claim to believe that he is the Savior, which I know he is. He was the biggest anti-Semite of his day. I guarantee you one thing, he called out the Pharisees, the Judaism, Judaic, Judaic, Judaism way of that day is no different today than it was 2,000 years ago. The state of Israel today is just like it was 2,000 years ago. Rome is also in control in Israel with the elitist Jews. They have a Sanhedrin court. They have a high priest set in place, and they're going to bring about a false messiah. But instead of you remembering that Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is truly the messiah, you have totally engulfed yourself so deeply involved in a political entity as if this is the salvation of the world. Yes, the law of the word of God will come from Jerusalem. You know why? Because your two witnesses are going to come there and they're going to lay it in to the, to the root of that tree. Yeshua called them a bunch of generation of vipers. And when he said that they, they were claiming, oh, had we been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been involved in the killing of the prophets. How did Yeshua respond? Did you, ever, did you ever really pay attention to the details of his response? He said, you know, I'm just paraphrasing, but, you know, fill you the measure of your fathers. Your own words are, are judged against you. In other words, you say that was your fathers and you're going to do what your fathers did. And he said, your fathers was of the devil. And he, he put all the righteous bloodshed on them all the way back to Cain in the garden. This is not a game, friends. And instead, okay, yes, there is a remnant, as Paul said, that has returned to the land. Zechariah prophesied they would return to the land. But you got to remember, Christ is going to redeem a remnant. I know there's some people who have the doctrine of 144,000 and said that would be 12,000 of every, all the tribes of, of, of Israel. All right, well, you've only got three tribes there then. So that's what, 36,000 people? Now, I'm not saying that I agree with this doctrine. I'm just showing you for an example, a doctrine. Just looking at numbers for a moment here, 
if that doctrine were correct, all right, and I can't say that it is, but let's just say that's, you know, if it's being interpreted correctly, but let's just say for argument's sake, if it were, you only have the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Benjamin, and some of the Levites there. And I say some because not everybody in a black suit, black hat, is a Levite. I promise you that. There's a lot of Hasmoneans that are there as they were 2,000 years ago and before that that usurped the true priesthood, the Zadok priest, and threw the Zadok priest out. You got that there, yes. But not every Orthodox Jew is a Hasmonean. All right? But, the fact of it is, even if it was, if we looked at 36,000 out of a country of what, six, over 6 million Jews, there's a small remnant. Maybe it's a smaller number. Maybe it's a bigger number. I don't know the answer to that. All right? But we need to get serious about the Word of God. All right? So as we look at this, and I'm going to jump back some of the other news is breaking that's going on right now, which, uh, well, let me just hit this real quick before we go into this. Uh, Michael Diaz reporting there that the U.S. military is in Poland right now. They moved a lot of their stuff. They're doing a rapid response to see how fast they can set up to get ready for war uh, there in uh, uh, Poland because of, no doubt, going to end up in war with Russia eventually there. So they're setting up ready for that massive amount of troop movement that went on. That's why I think we've probably seen some of our troop movement that moved into Spain, etc. cetera. Uh, but also, I think they're getting ready for what could be a possibility in the very near future. Uh, we also have ISIS plot to arm and fund terrorists hidden in Europe as the last territory falls in Syria. Uh, now that ISIS is supposedly has been defeated, uh, they're setting up to get ready to overthrow Europe. Isn't it interesting? Because, you know, Prime Minister Netanyahu is talking about wanting to take Britain's place in the European Union. And I happen to know some interesting information about that, too, uh, about a stranglehold they wanted to put on the European Union. That was spoken about in some very elite circles amongst the Jews years ago. But also we have some more interesting news here. Mike Pompeo thinks it's possible that Trump is a biblical savior. What? You know, listen, President Trump, I'll tell you something. He's done some good things. Don't get me wrong. I'm not here to bash the president. He's got enough problems right now because he's worried about this report, the Mueller report, and it going public. Some people believe it's the end of his presidency. All right? I can't say that it is or not because I've not seen the report. I know there's enough crooked things that went on, and I do know that there was collusion because I've got direct evidence on that. All right, and I just discovered another direct evidence as well, and people just don't even pay attention to some of these things there. But uh, nonetheless, won't get into that uh, at this point here. But he's saying that he's like a Trump is like a biblical savior. That's on newsvice.com was there. My wife sent some of this stuff to me. Bless her heart for doing that there. Also, EU says it will not follow Trump and recognizes Israel's sovereignty over the Golan. Well, God bless the EU on that part. At least they got a little bit of brains there. And I know you're not like that, say that. And again, listen, what I say, you please understand me. Biblically, the Golan does not belong to Israel that I can see. And I've looked it over several times, different aspects. And we're going to go into that. But I don't think that handing it over to Syria is the answer to, the, to solving the problem that we have. I think it's only going to turn into a war. I think that Israel should sit down and talk with Syria and, and make some amends for the wrongs that have been done. Because we have broken the commandment of God. You know, Laban made a covenant with Jacob. They made a, stone and, a pile of stones in Gilead. And he says, if you cross over this, don't cross over this to do me harm, and I won't cross over this to do you harm. Jacob is Israel. He is the one of the 12 tribes this father of the 12 tribes, which our country is supposed to be after. And as Israelites of the 12 tribes, we should honor the covenant that our forefather made with Laban the Syrian, which happens to be the father-in-law to, to Jacob and happens to be the mothers of Israel are all Syrians. Why do you want to have war with Syrians in? Why would we allow the Israeli government to arm jihadists to fight against the people of our mothers. I mean, think about it. That, I mean, I, I know a lot of people, they talk about, oh, I can't stand my mother-in-law. Well, that's, that's about what's happening. Israel can't stand their mother-in-law, so they're sending bombs over there to blow her up. I mean, this is insane. 
I mean, where, where is Christianity? Jesus, when he was there, the Syrians came to him and he healed them all. He cared about the mother-in-law of Jacob, of Bela, Rachel, Le uh, Leah, and Hilda. He cared about the mothers of Israel and their families in so much to heal them. All right. Also, one other bit of news here, then we'll move on to this issue here. Uh, Pompeo, Netanyahu, America is the new Rome. Netanyahu says about America that it is the new Rome. How do you take that one, boy? Rome, the Crusaders. In my opinion, yeah, they're the new Rome, all right. You're proud of it. You need Rome to fight the battles. Made the covenant with Rome during the days of the Maccabees, and what did they do? They took over the country. Ended up being the demise in 70 A.D. And here we are 70 years after being a nation, and it looks like we're about to end up with another demise of the country by political connections that we are making. Get back to the Word of God, friends. Please, somebody, wake up. Please, somebody, wake up. Now, let's get back to what I was talking about. This is what I want to share with you. Oh, this is also, let me go back to this real quick. Um, again, yesterday I played this for you guys. And this is very interesting, which also lets me know this may be a game about the Golan. They know something's going on with this. But watch here. Prime Minister Netanyahu, President Trump are in agreement. On launching the plan to establish a Palestinian state immediately after the election. They're going to divide Jerusalem. We've told you guys this for years, right? They are coordinated not to pre present the plan before the election. This is Naftali Bennett. He is uh, education minister in Israel. So as not to make difficult for Netanyahu. But a day or two after the elections, uh, the plan for the establishment of a Palestinian state on 90% of the area and the division of Jerusalem will be presented. 90%. Lapid and Gantz will enter the government as a national peace government. So Benny Gantz is going to get in one way or the other. And I mentioned to you the other day, I thought he was going to end up being, if not prime minister, uh, I didn't know he'd be part of the government, as what Mr. Uh, Naftali Bennett is saying there, but he said he will enter the government as a national peace government. Something's changing, friends. It's not what you think it is, and it's not maybe what I think it is. But Naftali Bennett is spilling the beans on it. The only way to stop this is with a strong and real right. But he's a hard writer as well. He used to be a part of uh, the Likud party uh, himself. Uh, okay, so thank you, he says. So anyway, we see, though, he is letting the cat out of the bag. It's going to be a two-state solution. They're going to divide Jerusalem. Uh, as everything has been planned, as we've said it for years, this is part of the 1993-1994-94 Oslo Accords. They had to bring Rome involved into this. They had to make a covenant between Israel and Rome as it was 2,000 years ago. And again, as I said to you over and over and over, don't forget, 2,000 years ago, what do we have? We had a Hasmonean dynasty that was claiming to be the high priest, uh, claiming to be the, the Levitical priesthood, and they were called the Pharisees. Yeshua called them a den of vipers. They called them, uh, according to the Hebrew Matthew, which is this particular book right here, he calls them a uh, the seed of vipers. Uh, and I'm going to be speaking about that in the Orlando Conference, and you're going to find out things that you probably never heard of before in your life. The worship of Leviathan himself. Uh, you're going to find out how the elite circles of the most Orthodox of rabbis actually have a worship of Leviathan, that sea serpent, the dragon, and he's considered one that is both good and evil, the yin and the yang, as it's been said by one rabbi, uh, but it's going to shock you. If you're at the conference, uh, you're going to hear things that you've not heard at any of these conferences before, so don't forget about that. All right, let's get into the biblical aspect of, of the Golan. Uh, now, if you're looking in a King James Bible, go to chapter 9, verse 1, 2, 
2 and 3. If you're in a Hebrew Bible, uh, chapter 8, we begin right here. Kof Gimel Kilo Moaf. Okay, there is there is no gloom to her that was steadfast. Now the former hath lightly afflicted the land of Zublin, the land of Naphtali, but the latter hath dealt a more grievous blow by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. All right, so anything beyond the Jordan, now they say in the district of the nations. All right, in Hebrew though, after you go beyond the Jordan here, Hayodan, Hayom Aver Hayodan Galil. Hagoan, okay, ha, ha, excuse me, Hagoim, all right, Galilee of the Goim, or the Gentiles, all right, so that area that was beyond the Jordan, according to Isaiah the prophet, is, that land belongs to the Gentiles, all right, and there's a lot of debate over that. Also, Matthew quotes this as well, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zubalan and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Now, that's translated correctly. The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region of a shadow of death, light is sprung up. All right, so why are we trying to make the goal on something that it's not. Now, again, I'm going to do this for the sake of argument. I want to show you both sides of this, all right? Now, here's the actual map of modern-day Israel, all right? Or actually, just up in the Golan area. And as we look at this, the Golan is a disputed territory. The River Jordan runs right here on the old Israeli line. And this was considered Naphtali's land right here. Zubalan is right in this area. Dan is up here, and actually, the land in, in southern Lebanon would actually belong to two of the tribes right there. It's not this, this land here that's not a part of Israel should be a part of Israel, and this land here in the Golan that we've made a part of Israel after the 67 war was a part of Syria in the biblical times and should be a part of Syria today. But to change it is not going to fix anything. It's only going to make a bigger mess, right? So, now... If you remember, though, Jacob and Laban made a covenant, a covenant at Gilead. Gilead is right here in the country of Jordan, all right? And this is where they made that covenant. They made that pile of stones, and they promised not to cross either way to harm the other. So Syria was that direction, and Israel was this direction, all right? Now, if you look at my Jewish learning, what do you know? My Jewish learning, rabbinical uh, ideology of the maps and the, and the tribes of Israel back in those days, we have Asher, Naft uh, Naphtali, Zubalan, Ishkar, Manasseh, Manasseh to the west and Manasseh to the east. But isn't it interesting? It's interesting. Just like Isaiah records, they put everything to the east belonging to what? To who? To the Syrians. See, and they put the Sea of Kinnereth, which is, according to the biblical side, is Galilee. It's called that sea as well. As well. And, but that's, here's what's interesting. Because my good friend, Brother Gary, had sent me the message about Deuteronomy. All right? He, he quoted to me Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 43. He says, remember, Brother Steve, he said, Moses was giving the refuge uh, refuge center, uh, cities where you could run if you'd killed a man. You didn't do it intentionally, but you killed a man and you wanted to run for refuge. All right, verse 43, Bezer in the wilderness and the tableland for the Reubenites and Ramoth Gilead, all right, and for the Gadites and Golan in Bashan for the uh, uh, Menasites, all right. Now notice, Golan in Bashan, and that's actually the way it speaks about over in Hebrew, Ve'et Golan, all right, in other words, it's like the city of Golan, which is where? Bebeshon, all right, so the Golan, the city that's called Golan was in Bashan, and Bashan is not considered by Moses part of Israel, but they had a city that was a part of Israel as a refuge city, but it was in Bashan, and it would be for, for the Manassites. 
All right. Now, if we look at what Moses said, and then we go back to that map again, let me just find it. All right. Uh, right there, the Jewish learning map. You can't really see it here, but right up in this area here is where the city of Golan was in the biblical times, which would actually be in part of Manasseh's territory according to their map. All right, now, let me show you some of these other maps as well. All right, this one here, and I don't know how well you guys can see that, but they, now they put Manasseh going further over, but again, they put the Syrian state this is on, um, that's just on uh, Pinterest. It doesn't tell you who actually gave me the, who did this here. But that's another map there. Let's see, I've got, all right. Now this particular map, it does just totally the opposite. It puts Bashan as part of Manasseh's territory. Now uh, this is on, let's see, it's called the Bible Study with Randy. And they have it totally different, and they put Manasseh being there. And, of course, the Golan, though, is way down here. So if you were looking at my Jewish learning map, as they showed Manasseh's territory looped up, and they included the Golan and went back down. But according to Moses, Golan was in Bashan. He didn't say that Manasseh was, that it was in Manasseh. He said the city of Golan was in Bashan. And Isaiah says that, that everything to the east was of the Gentiles. So if it's of the Gentiles, how can Manasseh be part of that land? Now we do know Manasseh had east of the, uh, of the Jordan River as well, but different maps, different conflicts over what's what. And again, we have another one here. And this map here, this is on the Bible, uh, is, on, is one book, uh, dot blogspot. They also show that that was a Syrian area at that time, but they do show Manasseh is across the Jordan River, and if you were able to see it, Golan is right there in the very tip northern side of Manasseh's property on the edge of Bashan. So, everywhere we look, biblically speaking, the Golan on the eastern side of the river was a Syrian territory. You know, but I'll tell you again, I'm not here for dividing it. I'm only telling you what the scripture says. All right. So I just want to share some of these things with you. Don't forget the coming persecution Orlando conference this coming Saturday, March 30th, 2019. It'll be held just outside of Orlando at the Embassy Suites by Hilton at 225 Shorecrest Drive, Ultimate Springs, Florida, 32701. You can donate online right here on our website. Uh, if you donate there, make sure you put in the description for the Orlando Conference. All right. Uh, we will compile the names together, print it out so you have a receipt. If you can't donate online, you want to do it at the door. I still have a few seats available. Send us a message right here in the comments on this particular uh, article here, The Coming Persecution Orlando. And by the way, if you go to the main part of the website, you won't see it that way, so I'll take you to the home part. But if you look right here at the top, The Coming Persecution Orlando Conference, March 30th, 2019, click on that. It'll take you there. You can donate right here. If you like our channel, you like the work we're doing, you can do it by mail. Our, our address is right there for you. So anyway, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Hope to see you. And again, it's going to be a blessing. One day conference Saturday at the Hilton Hotel there. And of course, the price, the details are all written in there. There's no itinerary of speakers. I didn't put that in as yet, but we start at 9 a.m. I'll be speaking in the morning, 9 to about 11.30, 12 ish, something like that. We'll break for an hour and a half for lunch. Yana speaks after lunch. Dr. Pigeon will be speaking at the end of the day. If you like the Sefer Bible, uh, or, or scriptures, I should say, the Sefer, uh, Dr. Pigeon and, and, and uh, his uh, uh, brother Brad uh, will be there as well, and they will have those available for you so you can purchase those at the conference. Blessings for you for, for coming. We hope to see you, and uh, Shalom.